Hi, this is the electrical review for 3.3. Uh, the title of this section is Properties of Functions and has lots of things that we're talking about in this section. Lee Willis is in the book, but the only, there's only one thing that we're actually going to focus on, and that's the average rate of change. The book actually talks about things called even and oddness. Uh, we don't have time to do about anything about that one, increasing, decreasing functions, that either. Uh, so there's, uh, there's a few things that we don't discuss. The only thing we're going to focus on, like I said, was the average rate of change. So the question is, what is the average rate of change? Well, the average rate of change is the average steepness of a function between two points. And that should look somewhat familiar to you. Okay, We talked about how steep of a line was. Now we identify that as the word slope. And, um, but slope on the average rate of change okay, yeah, it's only going to be the same when it's a line. Because now slope is when you're referring to a line. Well, 5x minus 1, do you remember what the slope of that one's going to be? It's the number in front of the x. That's 5. And it's going to stay 5. But look at example 2. Example 2 is a parabola. The steepness of that graph is constantly changing. It's changing from one thing to another thing. As a matter of fact, on the left side of zero, the slope is negative. It's going down. The steepness is going down. So it's got a negative slope. And then the it's going to be a positive slope. So at least the trend is anyway. And the farther you go up to the right, the steeper it becomes. So the average rate of change, what that does, it, it, it realizes that it's not going to be constant. But it wants to take the average rate of change. The good news is for you is it's going to be exactly the same formula. Like, well, you don't, if you like, you like, I don't recognize this formula. It's the same as the slope formula. The slope formula, remember, was the difference of the y coordinates over the difference of the x coordinates. Okay? And uh, like I said in class, what does M you know, stand for? That's the slope, but it used to be called the modulus slope. And so, modulus was where they got the word, the letter M at, and that's how they keep it. It has nothing to do with the word, the letter S looking like the number five, like your high school teacher may have told you. But the M stands for modulus slope. And they, like over the centuries, the, the word modulus kind of was discarded and slope stayed. So, but anyway, that's a little bit of history for today. Anyway, so this is the slope formula. The set, subtracting the y coordinates and subtracting the x coordinates. So y2 minus y1 is your f of b minus f of a. This is your second y coordinate. This is your first y coordinate. And then b minus a is the x2 minus the x1. So it's the same thing. That's the good news. Uh, so it's, it works the same way. Now, my example one, I want to find the average rate of change between 2 and 4. Now, I'll tell you what the answer should be. The answer should be 5 because that is the slope of that line. And it never changes anyway. But let's, let's, let's confirm it. So using the formula, it's going to be alpha 4 minus alpha 2 over 4 minus 2, because you're going from 2 to 4. So alpha 4 is actually 19. 5 times 4 is 20, and then 20 minus 1 is 19. Minus alpha 2, well, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9, so it's 19 minus 9. And then 4 minus 2 on the bottom. Now, 19 minus 9 is 10. 4 minus 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. I'd have been really surprised if it wasn't 5 because it's got to be 5 because it is a line. Now, the next one is always changing. So, what you get from 2 to 0, negative 2 to 0, may not, it will not be the same as if you go from 0 to 3, for example, or 0 to 2. It's always going to be changing. So, this is not something you can just look at the number in front of the x squared and identify what the slope is. So you got, you got to do the math here. So it's going to be alpha 0 minus alpha negative 2, because this is B, this is A. And again, you don't, it doesn't really matter the order as long as you're consistent, just like we did with slopes, over 0 minus a negative 2. Now, I don't know what it's going to be, not the top of my head, but I do know this. It's got to be a negative, because you're going from negative 2 to 0. And the line is actually going down, so the slope is actually going down. So it's going to have a negative slope. So whatever it is, I know it's negative. So alpha of 0 it would be 0 squared, which is 0, minus alpha of negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, so it's 0 minus 4. And then 0 minus a negative 2 is 0 plus 2, so it's negative 4 over 2, which is indeed a negative number, negative 2. 
So that that steepness from here to here has a slope of negative two. So if you if you connect this point with this point with a straight line, it does have a negative two slope. But if you look at the actual curve and function, it's a little steeper than negative two right, right in here. A little over here, it's a little shallow. So right here is probably a little about the slope is probably like negative three or so. About negative two or something, about negative one, and it's almost getting close to zero. But what it's doing is on the average, it's negative two. So so that's what the average rate change is. They know it doesn't stay consistent, but it's on the average, that's what it's going to be. This one very similar. So um, alpha of x equals square root of x. And if you remember what the graph looks like, it's 0, 1. So it looks like that. So if you're going from 1 to 9, 9 is way over here somewhere. The, that line connects those two points. It's, it's a positive, not very big. So if you look at that line that I connected, it's got a positive slope. It does increase a little bit, but not much. So it should be a positive, but not very big. So let's see what it is. So it's going to be alpha of 9 minus alpha of 1 over, what do you think? 9 minus 1. So alpha of 9 is 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. Alpha of 1, the square root of 1 is 1. And then 9 minus 1 is 8. So you get 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth. So it rises 1 and it runs four. So that is not very, I mean, it's, it's a little better than horizontal, but not by much. So, but anyway, that is the average rate of change. So, but when you're, like I said, when you're reading the book, if you're reading the book, you're going to find some uh, information, like even odd stuff that doesn't look like it, that pertains to what we're doing, and you'd be correct.